London, 1872. I have entered into the service of a new gentleman, it would seem. He is a gambling man. Hello everyone, and welcome to a new Let's Play. Uh, uh, it's called 80 Days, and we're going to try and go around the world in 80 days. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's a prior path I've taken uh, around. I think it took me 60 days. Um, we're going to see if we can try and beat that. Uh, we may not be able to. I think I got quite lucky. Um, you have to... Uh, the game works in a kind of real-time way, based on the novel by Jules de Verne. So when you arrive, you can run around doing things, but if you spend too long thinking, you miss your chance to move on. So we start in London, and we have to go around. Ooh, what's that? So there are various cities that we can go to, uh, although we can't interact with them at the moment. Uh, we start in London, as the story begins. Let's go, shall we? I'm wondering if this is meant to have music. Hang on. It is meant to have music. Hmm. All right. There we go. Uh, we are playing uh, Passepartout, who is uh, Phileas Fogg Fogg's valet. We're not actually playing as Fogg himself. Right. Uh, my master returned home from the reform club with a strange gleam in his eye. Passepartout, he s said he, we are going around the world. Pack my hunting rifle and my evening jacket. There is not a moment to waste. Uh, we now have some funds. So he gives us some money. We are in charge of money. We need charge of the luggage. And we find out there is a route to Paris. Uh, first of all, we get to pack some things. Uh, these are fairly useful, and we can actually run out of time. The European timetable will be useful, but the hunting rifle is probably, or is probably saleable, but it may be useful. I'm actually going to grab the timetable, I think. Uh, this will allow us to also see what routes are available. As you can see, I headed up to Warsaw last time. Um, and I, well, I went, headed to Warsaw last time. And, actually I want to plan this. This game will just pause at 8, because we have to get this track, I think. Yes. Um, normally it doesn't do that, it just plays through normally, but you have to get this particular train. Uh, so, uh, last time, you can see I went to, up to Berlin, and then along the Trans-Siberian Railway, and then around to Honolulu, across. Um, we might be going, we'll probably try and go a different route this time. I might try and follow more closely the story, um, which I think we was south to Venice, I think, and then a boat across to Alexandria, through the, through the Suez Canal, across to India, and then kind of meeting, probably meet us, uh, probably meet us around Vanilla, though I think they went to Singapore and then up to Japan and then across. Um, and then across America, obviously, and then back over. Now, this game is actually fairly steampunk, as we are about to find out. Back to London. Uh, I think we will keep that. Um, it's something we can sell when we leave, by the way. Because there is a buying-selling. Money management is important in this game. Let's go! Let's uh, board the Amphitrite Express to Paris. We are allowed one uh, piece of luggage, so that is a limit. You can't buy, keep everything you want, and uh, uh, Phileas Fogg has a degree of stamina, which he may or may not lose as we go on. Let us go. It'll be a bearable route. So we have a little uh, a steampunk handsome cab here that's uh, taking us along. Uh, so I, th I assume... Oh, We leapt aboard the 825 from Charing Cross. It's about no one at the moment, whatever. As the final whistle shrieked its warning, our journey had begun. Converse. Ah, greetings, Monsieur Verne. Ah, Passepartout, did you say your name was? What a curious appellation. So we can ask about all kinds of different routes. So we want to know Paris to Nice, I think. Uh, the route from Paris to Nice is timetable. On the subject of trains, I've heard one can travel aboard the Trans-Siberian Express from Moscow to Kadamskaya, but the fare is nearly £2,000. So that's another reason to avoid certain routes, is they cost you more. 
you can negotiate them to be slightly earlier, but that costs you more as well. Right, uh, Nice to... Oh, Nice to Luxor. Is that a route? Is it possible to go from Nice to Luxor? No idea, but you can pick up Egyptian carved scarabs in Luxor that will sell for a fortune in Bandar Abbas. Okay, what about uh, Tunis? Oh my, is that the time? But we've, we've, we've now heard about the Trans-Siberian Railway. When you go on routes like this, you can, you can talk to people. And they might give you information about new routes you could take. Or um, uh, routes that you might be thinking of. And they might give you an idea like, that's going to cost us so much money, we may not be able to do it. Uh, especially with the fact that I'm planning on going more towards the south. Uh, the Amphitrite Express rattle along narrow gauge rails to Dover, where its fins extended and it plunged directly into the channel. See? Steampunk-ish. Monsieur Fogg had no remark as the dark water pressed against our windows. I thought it so marvellous at the time, but how many marvels were still to come? So we're kind of narrating it. And we do have a lot of control over how the narrative goes, sometimes in ways that don't really make sense. Um, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. We splashed up onto the rails at Calais and closed the remaining miles to Par Paris Gare du Nord quickly. According to today's paper, Monsieur Fogg remarked, the Orient Express now runs as far as Bucharest. Ah. So, uh, we can go on a, uh, <laughs> we always end up on the Orient Express at some point in some of these games. There seems to be no departures today, we should explore a little. Again, this is kind of deliberately set up. You'll see that time is ticking away, that makes this kind of explanation a little bit awkward. Now we can look at the, uh, look here, see if there's anything we want to sell. We're probably not going to go to Copenhagen. We can give these to people, that will give us more chance to talk to them, and then we can sell it later, I think we will get that. Um, flat cap. We may buy that, but then we've got to buy a new suitcase, so I think we will leave it. And now, the key to finding new routes, uh, if we want to, we can look, because all we know about trains, is we can explore. Now, the thing is, that might mean that we now have, in theory, we now have a new route that's open to us, which is the one to Amsterdam that was just revealed. Um, and from there we can explore onwards. Um, that might be open today, or it might be that we've just run out of time and we no longer can open it because it was no because it was it's already gone today. Right. Whenever you explore, you find out you get like a little choose your own adventure kind of story. So the exposition universelle sprawled over the grounds of the purpose-built Palais du Champ de Mars. Hot air balloons. I'm, I'd like to apologise for any mispronunciations in this game. Um, I will be attempting them, and probably failing. Sail gently the hot air balloons sail gently across the sky, and the powdery light of the Yablo Yablokov candles gleamed invitingly. So, as I said, kind of choose your own adventure kind of thing, we get to pick one of these. I, I was flooded with memories of the Siege of Paris, and my own small par part in it. I suppressed my memories of the Siege and visited the exposition. The memories of the Siege were too painful, I stayed locked in my room. Right, so I think we'll visit the exposition. Um, this one, you kind of walk al walk along through Paris, you see some sights. I can't remember exactly what happens from it, but I don't think I've ever picked the option to visit the exposition. So let let's go, shall we? Yes, I suppressed my memories of the siege and visited the exposition. What happens? Oh! Ooh! I headed towards the red and purple tents of the Artificers Guild. So the these are the guys who, have pro who are producing the gadgets that we've seen, a uh, few that we've seen. Um, there are some quite remarkable ones later, I think. Uh, I took a stroll down the Avenue of Nations. I went west, west towards the airship hangar. Now that might give us some bit of information about some about a variety of airships. Uh, the route from New York to London is an airship. Um, you can get an airship from I think I think um, the route I got to Honolulu was an airship. I think maybe Honolulu to San Francisco was an airship. So that might be useful. Or we could talk to the Artificers Guild. And there's an Artificers Guild in most cities, I think. So actually visiting them might give us a bit of um, help and might actually give us a little bit of a story for us to follow along rather than just Passepartout and Phileas Fogg's. I think we'll do that. I headed towards the red and purple tents of the Artificers Guild. Draped with banners and blazing with their copper lily si si uh, sigil, uh, a uh, steam-powered automaton orchestra play played gleaming brass instruments, or it had the most incredible display of machines. As I said, it's a little weird. Um, I, I'm saying, i describing what happens. It's almost as if I'm the narrator controlling pa Passepartout's fate, while at some other point I'm playing as Passepartout. I don't know. So, I get a degree of control over how people interact. It's not just Passepartout's 
decisions that I'm controlling. Um, I think... I think, yeah, they're going to be play an orchestra in Paris, because music and culture and yay. A steam-powered automaton orchestra played gleaming black brass instruments. While a mechanical sommelier popped the cork from a champagne bottle and poured out bubbling, bubbling over glasses for passing tourists. One of the artificers had his hands deep inside a human-shaped automaton, or was explaining the guild's credo to a group of sticky-fingered children. Um... Well, I assume all of these are going to be human-shaped, so I th he's going to be repairing one, I think. He's got his hands deep inside a human-shaped automaton. Rummaging through its clockwork innards, he took out a piece of engraved glass and peered at it with a jeweler's loop. Bashed thing! He cursed in upper-class English tones and then looked up. Oh, hello! Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. What are you doing? Put it at the shoulder, what is that? Uh, we are a valet. Um, we we are we have spent a little bit of time with the upper class, not too much. I think in the story it was just like his first day. He signs up with Phileas Fogg, and then he comes back and says, "Passport, ooh, we're going on an adventure," um, which is not something he expected. But he's still going to have 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 kind of a little bit of trained uh, regard. So he's not just going to blurt on the answer. Uh, I, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. And although Passport is of course French, I will not be attempting a French accent. Um, for him. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I said politely. Nonsense, young man! He waved the glass shot dismissively. I'm trying to build an automaton that can cook, you see. But it's not going well. He looked mournful. This one can't even fry a chip. Uh, how long have you been trying? Surely... Yes, let, let's anger an artificer. Let's, we're trying to, going to try and buddy up with him. Maybe he can give us some information about a, another route. Maybe he can tell us about another, a city where we can, you know, if we if we say the right password, we can whatever, we can um, we can get through some way. Uh, how long have you been trying? I asked. Oh, it's been a dream of mine ever since I was a young lad at boarding school. That's why I became an artificer. The wistful tone dropped into horror. The things old Mrs. Parsons could do to a cabbage. The tender stomachs of Britain's youth would be much safer in mechanical hands. Uh, perhaps they should simply hire French cooks. Yes. Uh, do you cook yourself? Not a jot, the artificer, the artificer replied cheerfully and stroked his moustache. Hmm. Do you suppose that's the fly in the ointment? He thumped me on the back. Good thought, old chap. Perhaps I'll go and find myself a cook to model my automaton upon. The artificer smiled. I wished him well in his culinary endeavours, or was rather sceptical at his ambition. No, no, we will wish him well. Maybe in parting he will express some wisdom. I wished him well in his culinary endeavours. He was, at, at least, in the right city to find a cook, and returned to the centre of the exposition. The exposition is ringing with the bombastic tunes of the steam orchestra. Avenues sprawled in every direction between the inviting illuminated pavilions of the exposition. So we go back to the beginning. I assume we've kind of reached the point we've gone exploring and there's nowhere else to... There's no none no, others the rest of the day. The day isn't ticking on at this point. It allows you to actually think about what you're doing at this point. This is kind of the narrative part rather than the s random sporadic thing, which will get very kind of tense as you're kind of like, should I take this route? It's about to end in a couple of minutes. Like, ah! Right, uh, the Avenue of Nations west towards the airship hangar. Let's go to the airship hangar. If it's like this, we might be able to go to the Avenue of Nations anyway. Right. I went west towards the airship hangar, past a booth with a husband and wife pair selling panoramic hot air balloons rides eager to tourists. Uh, I'm not going to inquire. We're not, we're not sightseeing. We're not here. We're just trying to get around the world in 80 days. Uh, preferably 60 days, because that would be my last record. I think it was 60 days. I may be incorrect. That is unfortunate. I can't remember. Right. The hangar was crowded with airships and flying vehicles of all shapes and sizes, attended by sharp-eyed crews from all over the world, and my eye was immediately caught by the African-made rigid metal balloon, the gilded Egyptian Ifrit-class airship, the metal-clad four-propeller Savakar At Atmotic, the bulky coal-gas-powered Ottoman Gaik, the twin-bladed Peruvian gyrocopter. We're probably not going to... Head to Peru. My my thought is similar to the artificers. Maybe if we kind of buddy up with a certain per, per, cer, yeah, person in a certain group, maybe they can then say, "Oh, actually, there's this really good airship route in this place." So uh, we probably don't want to talk to the Peruvians because we're not really 
going to be go. I don't think we're going to be going to Peru. That would involve probably going down to Australia and then going across, which I think is probably a waste. Oh, well, it depends where we come out is the problem. But I think the more immediate issues are going to be around here. I think the African made rigid. No, the gilded Egyptian Ifrit class airship is what we're going to look at, I think. Painted all over with style, stylized poppies and feathers, it resembled nothing more than a vast flying sarcophagus. Uh, do people really fly in such things? I prefer to have my feet on the ground. I do. I understand that. I mean, if I were to do. I mean, I remember. Well, if I were to go around the world in 80 days, I'd be quite mental. But I think you'd have to put in a rule about no flying. So, um, otherwise, you could just like fly to Australia for a couple of, well, try fly to like Singapore and then San Francisco, then New York, and then London. You could probably do that, and that's like that's only a couple of days. So, uh, do people really fly in such things? I asked an exhibitor. Indeed, hundreds of them do, and every day he replied with a booming laugh. They say the skies of Arabia are crisscrossed with the trails of the Egyptian ships. Perhaps one day soon, Monsieur Fogg and I would find ourselves flying in such a craft. I returned to the exposition centre, my thoughts turning with clouds and engine rotors. Crowds of tourists jostled and heaved past, their eyes wide with wonder. Uh, okay, so I thought maybe we'd have got something more out of this. Uh, we haven't actually got gotten anything from this little narrative bit, other than there are airships, which is something interesting, but we'll, we'd find that out when we have uh, <laughs> to get one. So I took a stroll down the Avenue of Nations lined with buildings in the styles of the nations of the world, and manned by foreign delegates in national dress. Although the newly formed German Empire was a conspicuous absentee. Dun dun dun. And so what year would this be? I mean, because it was, it was uh, the German Empire was 1880, or certainly the 1880s. Um, uh, I don't think he'd probably notice it that much. A most eclectic sight. Ooh. The Zulu Federation had built a replica village. The Austro-Hungarian delegation was being harangued by an artificer. Ooh, so more more artificer plot. I think I think we'll have a look at that. I think. Who looked to me like a farm boy from Provence? The artificer was pointing at one of the soldiers guarding the doorway and shouting in terrible German, "Verboten! Verboten!" I peered at the soldier. Uh, what is the matter here? I asked the artificer, and he rounded on me. These Austro-Hungarians, he raged in peasant-accented French. How dare they? Uh, what do they dare? I assume, is this connected to the Siege of Paris? What do they dare? That! The soldier by the stand moved suddenly with a mechanical judder and realized he was no ma I realized he was no man at all, but rather an automaton with an enamel-painted uniform and pewter faces. The artificer cursed. These Austro-Hungarians have brought their automata soldiers to Paris, even though war machines are expressly forbidden by the guild. Who knows what danger they might represent? I turned away hurriedly. My feet were tiring, tiring and the hour was growing late. I returned to Monsieur Fogg, who was eating a meal of plain boiled beef à l'anglaise. Did you enjoy the exposition? My master inquired diff diffidently, as though I had been on out visiting an aged great aunt, having preferred a hearty meal in English name. Um... And I nodded. It was quite interesting. I mean, we, we again, we've not had any kind of ideas, although there does seem to be a, a, a little frustration between the Austro-Hungarians and Paris. Maybe we shouldn't head that way. I nodded. Uh, oh, nothing else could impress me now. We are unspeakably lucky to live in such an age of invention. Will we travel by airship, do you suppose? Uh, do you think we will encounter artificers on our travels? Quite possibly. There's a lot of there's m some in many cities. Uh, will we travel by airship? Do you suppose? I asked. I think it is highly likely. He replied. They are expensive but extremely fast. I dreamed that night of mechanical wonders and automatons with beautifully enameled faces. Knowing little of the strange inventions and stranger people, I would soon encounter in my journey around the world. <laughs>